it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, the speaker this, this, uh, this noon, Ambassador Gerald uh, Fireside. And uh, he was sworn in as the U.S. Ambassador to Yemen uh, in September 17th of, of 2010. And prior to that, he served as Deputy Chief of Mission in Islamabad, Pakistan. And I believe if you've received the notice of this meeting, you'll you'll know the rest of the details, and I don't want to end up with no audience and, and a speaker, so Ambassador, Mr. Ambassador, please come and join us. We're delighted to have you here. Welcome to the Detroit. Thank you. We're delighted to have you here, right. and we'll get down to the questions okay. and concerns. I know we have a tight schedule, so right. uh, the Yemeni American community, as you know, is probably the largest, uh, or the third largest Arab American community in Michigan, and we have... <coughs> still very much interest in Homeland. Mm -hmm. And some of the questions that, that we would like to ask you about is basically mostly deals with issues related to Yemen Americans, mm -hmm. especially at your embassy, mm -hmm. uh, family unifications and visas. Mm -hmm. A lot of claims have been members of this community saying that there's a discriminatory process uh, practices in your embassy mm -hmm. towards Americans of Yemen descent, mm -hmm. <coughs> delays of visas. Mm -hmm. um, and this is probably the number one issue to this, to this community. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you want to talk to the community? How can we address this issue? Well, well certainly uh, the, the, the fundamental point that I would make is that uh, we do not discriminate against, uh, um, against the Yemeni American community or any community for that matter. Uh, uh, certainly as we look at our responsibilities uh, in the embassy, uh, we, uh, uh, we believe that service to uh, American citizens is one of our highest uh, obligations, it's one of our highest responsibilities, and, um, and uh, we will continue to do everything that we can in order to meet uh, the, the requirements of the community within the context of our uh, rules and, uh, and uh, procedures and, and uh, the laws that are applicable. So, uh, now uh, uh, we are uh, going through a process. We're reevaluating the way we do things. We're uh, uh, we're doing everything that we can to make sure that the uh, that the uh, service that people receive uh, in the in the uh, embassy is of the highest order. I can't promise that everybody will be satisfied. Uh, uh, you know, this is the unfortunately the nature of the. Uh, of the uh, of the, the the situation, uh, but uh, we will do everything that we can uh, to make sure that people feel at the end of it that they've had a fair opportunity to state their case and to and to uh, receive uh, the uh, the appropriate service. Oh, very good. Uh, again, just follow up. <clears throat> I know you're going to have a, a town hall meeting, uh -huh. uh -huh. and I think this is going to be the number one. Priority for them, right? Uh, and again, they, there's going to be hundreds and thousands, uh, if not thousands, that are going to tell you the same thing: that delays, delays, and visas. Right. And what role can we play as a young American right. community to, right. to uh, assist in that matter? Well, I, I, you know, really, and, and uh, um, I think that uh, unfortunately, uh, the situation because of uh, security concerns and other kinds of. Uh, of uh, concerns, uh, the situation, the, the process has become more complicated, more time consuming. Uh, there's nothing that we can do about it, to be entirely honest. Uh, we will do everything that we can in order to make sure that the, that it, uh, that the service is done as quickly as it can be. Uh, people have every right to expect uh, that the treatment that they get in an American embassy is, uh, is courteous and, uh, and open, and uh, we will make sure that that happens. Uh, but, uh, but in terms of the amount of time it takes, I'm afraid that, uh, that these aren't always uh, uh, issues that are in, within our control. Eh? It, will, it will take as, as much as time as it takes. Uh, we'll try to make that as short as possible, but we can't make any promises. And for those that uh, family members of uh, American citizens that come to the embassy for visas, and uh, it's been proved that they were children that is that a discretion of the embassy, or is that part of the law? That's part of the law. In, uh, under which? Uh, well, I, I think that uh, I'm not a consular officer, so I don't. I, I can't cite the chapter and verse, but uh, 
but uh, um, use of narcotics is, uh, is one of the uh, exclusionary factors. Okay, very good. Um, that's also a big issue to, to all of us mm -hmm. uh, because uh, you know, no one can deny that God is the best time for all of mm -hmm. And we're afraid that our concern is mm -hmm. a lot of Americans of Yemeni descent are being punished not to be with their family based on that. Mm -hmm. And the reality is once they get here to the U.S. that you know, they don't lose it. And right. I mean, is there something you can help the, uh, Americans of Yemeni descent in that? Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, make any promises along those lines. Uh. <laughs> no, to deviate a little bit, not to get to the political situation, you know, I heard your lecture earlier and uh, you uh, elaborated more on the unity, security, mm -hmm. st uh, stable Yemen. I'm sorry, stable, secure Yemen. Mm -hmm. And what's also important to us as American Yemen is the unity of Yemen. Absolutely. And we consider that as a sacred, and we, we compare it to what this great country went through mm -hmm. during this struggle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> having said that, there is a small element of cessation mm -hmm. in the South. Mm -hmm. What role are you planning to mediate, or what role is, is the U.S. playing in that, in that issue to, towards unity? Well, um, on the issue of unity in particular, I think that the U.S. position, and we've articulated it, I've articulated it since I've been in, in Sana'a, uh, uh, our position is very clear, uh, and that is that as far as we're concerned, the issue of the unification of Yemen was resolved in 1990. Uh, there was the uh, Civil War in 1994. As you'll recall, the United States position in 1994 was also very clear. We supported the, uh, the, the unity of the country. Uh, we, uh, we were uh, very firm in saying that, uh, that we would not support uh, any kind of secessionist movement. That hasn't changed. Our position is still as clear today as it was back then, that, uh, uh, that as far as we're concerned, there is no uh, discussion of separation. We're not interested in that at all. It's not to say, it's not to say that we don't recognize that the people in the South have legitimate concerns and legitimate grievances, and we do believe that the society needs to address those, but we think that it needs to address them within the context of a unified Yemen. No, <clears throat> Yemen employment rate, according to the CIA facts, I think at 35%, I think it's a lot, a lot, higher. a lot higher. Mm -hmm. You talked in your lecture about uh, the role uh, of, of the Saudis and the Gulf states. No. Mm -hmm. Would it be what what role does the U.S. Uh, would play in helping you know, economically directly? We have genuine programs that we used to see in the past in the right. in the seventies and right. early eighties. We see a lot of a lot of uh, direct programs where a lot of students came to the U.S. Mm -hmm. A lot of mm -hmm. colleges uh, sponsored mm -hmm. students. They went back, and now you have a lot uh, uh, decent number of uh, mm -hmm. American products educated. Will we see this again? Uh, I hope so. Um, and one of the things that we've talked about uh, is the the, uh, the possibility of developing new programs for Yemeni uh, Yemenis to come study in the United States. Uh, I agree with you completely that uh, uh, that that uh, that that program that we had in the 1960s and 1970s educating Yemenis uh, was a, a hugely successful uh, program made a great contribution to the development of Yemeni society. And I can say that uh, the thing that I hear the most uh, as I go around in Yemen, as I, as I meet with people there, is the desire to see uh, a scholarship program again for Yemenis the way we used to do. And so uh, that's very much uh, one of the things that we're discussing uh, within uh, the State Department and in uh, within the, the senior levels of the, of the U.S. government. Uh, it is, of course, as you know, uh, this is a difficult time to be talking about expanding programs, uh, but uh, I think that people understand uh, that, uh, that having uh, a large number of Yemeni students here does two things. One, of course, is uh, that we would like to think that we're producing the leaders of tomorrow in Yemen, uh, the people who will be uh, the best educated, the most capable, uh, 
uh, the most skilled uh, in, uh, in providing services and leadership to, to the Yemeni society, and that's important. The other thing, of course, is that we're making friends uh, for the United States who will be our friends for a lifetime. And uh, certainly when you look at uh, people like Abdul Karim al uh Abdul Aziz uh, Abdul Ghani, uh, these are people who were educated in the United States uh, uh, many years ago, uh, but who until this day have been good friends in the United States as well as, uh, as the leaders of, of Yemeni society. And, uh, I think that that's something that we would like to see happening again. Now, besides the support, the counterterrorism support that the U.S. is providing Yemen, <coughs> excuse me, in the military, what in which we, as Yemeni uh, uh, Americans of Yemeni descent, mm -hmm. totally support, mm -hmm. we would like to see more the private sector entrepreneurs Absolutely. investments in Yemen. How could that be uh, delivered, and what what role does the U.S. Well, I, I think that we haven't seen it. We haven't seen a large numbers of private investors in Yemen. Right. Yemenis, like you mentioned before, they're not anti-U.S. They want to see visibly see right. see things on the underground, and we haven't seen that. What would you like to see? Well, I, I think that there are, that there are several factors here. Right? Uh, the, the one the one factor where we certainly have engaged with the uh, with the government of Yemen is to ensure that there's a good uh, uh, a good framework a good environment for investment. Uh, and that means to, to make sure that the legal and regulatory uh, 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 framework is, is right, uh, that, uh, that the business people who are coming to invest, and we're talking here not only about foreign investors, but also about, America, uh, but also about Yemeni investors, uh, that they have confidence that they will be treated uh, fairly uh, that uh, that uh, they know uh, that they'll be uh, operating on a level playing field, uh, that uh, there is an appropriate mechanism in place if there is any kind of a dispute in ensuring that the dispute is resolved in a, in a, in a fair and just way. So those kinds of environmental issues are very important. Uh, then beyond that, uh, I think that uh, uh, you need to make sure that you have a secure environment for investment. That people need to know that uh, that they won't uh, that they won't confront uh, you know an extremist environment or one that that makes it impossible for them to uh, to carry through on their uh, on their uh, uh, investments and, and to actually implement their uh, their programs because of the lack of security in the society. And then the last element is to ensure that there are, are good programs and projects to invest in uh, and, that, uh, and that we're making the right decisions in terms of economic growth uh, and the development of industries and the development of, uh, of uh, resources in Yemen that allows for people to look at it and, and say that this is a, a viable program. At the end of the day, the private sector is interested in ensuring that they can uh, make a profit. And you need to have uh, out there uh, projects that uh, promise, uh, you know, a good shot at profitability. So all of those things are, are factors. Uh, we can help on, on a number of them. We can help uh, encourage the government to make the right decisions in terms of creating the legal and regulatory framework and, and uh, building a, a positive environment. Certainly, our program uh, and our uh, partnership with the government of Yemen is aimed at addressing uh, the security issues and making sure that, uh, that, uh, that uh, Yemen becomes a secure and stable uh, a country that, that is inviting for investors. Uh, and, uh, uh, and we want to cooperate. And then the other part that we can play a role in, and not only the United States, but the whole international community, is helping to ensure that, um, that uh, w with young Yemenis, we're building uh, a strong uh, labor force that has the skills that they need uh, and, the, uh, and the commitment that they need in order to uh, compete effectively in this uh, 21st century global economy. What obligation do you think the Yemen's government needs to implement? Well, I, I think that Yemen, the Yemeni government needs to be a, a strong partner in all of these initiatives. And, uh, uh, and uh, you know, they, they uh, ultimately, at the end of the day, they're the ones who are going to make the decision. 
and they're the ones who are going to ensure that the environment is right and that uh, that the situation is stable, and they're the ones who are going to to uh, be the the, uh, the the partner with the private sector uh, to to make these things happen. No, in relation to democracy, oh, we we tend to believe that Yemen has planted the seed for democracy. Where would you rate Yemen's democratic process right now? Well, I, I think it's a work in progress, and uh, uh, and I think that. Uh, uh, you know, as as we're working through some of these uh, some of these issues, and uh, really to look at it as an evolutionary uh, uh, project, it's not something that is going to be, it's, and it hasn't been uh, perfect from the from the very beginning. Uh, but uh, but um, you know, we see great opportunities, and uh, as we work through some of these political issues that we're confronting right now. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, getting ready for the parliamentary elections and the presidential election in 2013. Do you believe that's going to happen uh, by uh, spring? Uh, well, I, I don't want to put a date on it. And that's one of the points that we're making is let's not put a date on it. Let's make sure that, the, that it's right. Let's make sure that we have a good election. Uh, if that happens on April 27th, the, that's great. My understanding is the date has been set. That means well, April, April, April 27th has been announced as the date, but our position is uh, let's not be bound by uh, any decision about a date. Let's make sure that uh, we have an election in Yemen that's going to be seen by the Yemeni people as legitimate and credible, that's going to be seen by the international community as legitimate and credible. And if that means that it doesn't happen on the 27th of April, that's not the important thing. The important thing is that you have a good election, not that you have an election on a certain day. Okay. Now, let's jump back to your trip here. In Michigan, what is the expectation, and what what would you like to address the Yemeni American community? Well, I, I think uh, uh, what the objective is the reason uh, the reason that we uh, that we came here in the in the middle of winter and in the middle of a snowy uh, January day in Detroit uh, is uh, two uh, two factors. One, I think it's important for the Yemeni American community to to understand what it is that we're trying to accomplish in Yemen. Uh, we understand that this is a community that's still very interested in developments back home, that follows events in Yemen very closely, uh, probably has family there or, or, uh, or uh, close friends, uh, and therefore we wanted to use this opportunity to reach an interested community and to describe to them what it is that this administration is trying to achieve in terms of building this partnership with Yemen. The other uh, part, part of it is, is to basically say that as we go forward, as we build this partnership with Yemen, we believe that the Yemeni American community has an important role to play in that. That they are the people who can act as the bridge between our two societies. They understand the United States and Yemen. They speak English and Arabic. Uh, they, uh, they are familiar with the cultures and the societies in both places. Uh, and therefore, they're natural partners for us. And we'd like to see uh, Yemeni Americans more involved in uh, promoting this close relationship and, uh, and really uh, coming to Yemen, uh, uh, speaking uh, uh, more uh, uh, openly about the experiences of life here in the United States. One of the things that we'd like to see happen is to have more Yemenis coming to the United States spending some time with us, a few weeks or a few months, uh, really traveling around and meeting people and getting to know more about the United States. One of the things that, that I've, I've said, and I said to the Secretary before she came, uh, is that uh, we hear a lot about uh, anti-Americanism in Yemen, about the fact that Yemenis don't want to see the United States, they don't support uh, uh, U.S. involvement. That's not been my experience. My experience is quite the contrary. I found that the Yemeni people are eager to have uh, to have contact with the United States, and they want to have uh, uh, the United States involved. What they don't want is for everything uh, in terms of U.S. policy to be dictated by the requirements of the fight against violent extremism and counterterrorism. They want to to be confident that the U.S. understands what their concerns are. And that when we talk about a partnership between the U.S. and Yemen, we mean that it's going to include also 
uh, what we can do together to address these critical economic and social challenges. Uh, and so uh, I see that the Yemeni American community can be an important part of our efforts to explain what it is that we're trying to do and to assure the Yemeni people themselves that in fact in the United States they do have a true partner and they do have a, a country that really is committed to a long-term relationship uh, that's going to address some of these key challenges. What, what message? Yeah. 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 Can I go to the last question? Sure. So, uh, I will be the, the bad person who are wrong there. Okay. Tunisia, what happened in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. Did the United States have any plan that have, that accidents can happen in Yemen? <laughs> well, accidents can happen anywhere. I, I think, you know, like, like I said earlier, uh, I, I think you always have to be careful about drawing analogies or comparisons between two societies. Uh, um, can you say that, you know, uh, uh, in Tunisia you had a large population of unemployed youth and you have that in Yemen? Yes, you can say that. Uh, can you say that uh, people were concerned about, uh, about the lack of, uh, of uh, democratic uh, uh, institutions? Sure, you can. I would say that, that unlike in uh, Tunisia, you do have a political opposition in, in Yemen, which does have uh, an ability to, uh, to speak out, and they do speak out. Uh, you have other uh, attributes in, in Yemen that are different from Tunisia. And so um, I, I think that, that it's, uh, it's uh, dangerous to try to uh, make assumptions that because uh, we had a certain outcome in Tunisia that, uh, that we'll have the same outcome in, in Yemen. Uh, I think that we have an opportunity and what we're trying to do in terms of promoting dialogue and agreement uh, between the opposition and, uh, and the government in Yemen on this political process, on the elections, is an important element of a strategy that's going to make sure that you don't have an, a Tunisia outcome in Yemen. Uh, through uh, the development of, of strong democratic institutions and a vibrant multi-party democracy in Yemen, uh, that's the antidote uh, to the kind of, uh, of fragility that you saw in the Tunisia experience. And that's what we're trying to accomplish, and that's what you know, we've been engaged with both uh, the government and the, the uh, opposition parties in trying to promote. Okay. Last question. Any <laughs> messages to the Yemeni American community? That was the last question. <laughs> that was the last question. <laughs> uh, your message to the Yemeni American community. Uh, my message to the American, uh, Yemeni American How community can we help? is, is uh, uh, that, uh, that the United States uh, is uh, developing a new partnership in Yemen. Uh, that uh, uh, we had uh, an extremely successful visit uh, by uh, Secretary Clinton to, to Sana'a 10 days ago uh, that really uh, put uh, the, uh, th this, new, uh, 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 this new effort of the United States into an appropriate focus, uh, but we want that partnership to include also the active engagement of Yemeni Americans. Okay. So, Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure. Okay.